Hey everyone, welcome to Reading Crossbow. My name is Lena, and today I'm giving my halfway review on Some Desperate Glory by Emily Tesh. This was Robert's suggestion. If you're new to us, there's two of us on this podcast, me and Rob, and I pick a book every month. Rob picks a book every month. We each do a halfway review on each other's suggestions, and then we review them together. So that's where we're at if you're just joining us. And Rob tends to like books that I don't love. Uh, he likes grimdark fantasy, and I like romantic fantasy, but this is a space opera. We both like space operas. We're both big fans of The Expanse, and I think he's read some other space opera books I haven't, so uh, space opera, very cool, super excited. Thanks, Rob, for pushing us in the sci-fi direction this month. All right, before we get into the book review, two things that we should probably talk about that are very interesting. One, trigger warning. This book has a very detailed paragraph long trigger warning. There's a lot, oh my gosh. Um, and it makes it sound kind of scary, um, but so far I'm a third of the way through. I know I said halfway, but it was a great stopping point right before part three. So I stopped at the third point, but anyway, uh, yeah, major trigger warning at the beginning of this. So make sure to check that out if you're curious before you start reading it, if any of those trigger warnings apply to you. And part two of things to know before you start reading this book is the author made a very very interesting choice, which is that um, she probably offended a large portion of people before they even read the book, which might not be the best choice. But um, you know what? I knowing uh, a bit about the book and how far I am, it, I see why she would. So it's eh. anyway, let's just get to it. Um, there is a section. It's one. I think it's one page. It's just one quick page from an alien manuscript or an alien transcript that is taken out and you get this information first before you get to chapter one. And this information is very um, it's interesting. Uh, the aliens are describing humans um, and trying to identify or trying to talk about how humans talk about gender. And the aliens in this book are, are more gender fluid um, and they don't necessarily identify as male or female. They're just there and they don't have a male or female, um, but some of them do identify male, uh, I think. So it's just more that the aliens find us weird because we put a label on it. So, um, if anybody is, is extremely, extremely conservative, like really far from middle, um, you might read that first, uh, page and think like, oh, this is not a book for me, but let me calm that, which is the way the author writes about things is very, very well done. Uh, I'm actually so far very impressed with this author. And so I just, I read that first page and I hadn't even read chapter one yet. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> like we're recommending these books and someone, there's always someone is going to get to that first page and be like, what the hell, man? And just like, you know, and, uh, I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. The author has done a great job. If that type of story offends you, then you know what? Out the gate, the book's not for you. But I would strongly encourage you to make it past that. So anyway, enough on that. Space opera. Cool. Okay. Our story takes place in a world post Earth's destruction. <laughs> how all space operas are actually i don't really know i've only read the expanse series and only halfway through so but uh more on that later but our story follows cure uh short for valkyr which i think is a really badass name for a female protagonist which by the way this is our fourth book fifth book we're we've only had female protagonists so far so we're still on that kick so myself or rob needs to get a male protagonist <laughs> at some point but anyway our story follows val cure and she is a war breed uh war breeds are um soldiers that were were bred genetically on earth before earth's destruction um to make uh, elite soldiers. And this was done genetically for the most part, not completely, where they take um, genes of the strongest humans and they they breed these like amazing war babies that <laughs> end up becoming amazing soldiers. And they have enhanced abilities that they've genetically crafted. They see better, they hear better, they're stronger, they're bigger. So Cure herself is a massive human. She has a brother. His name is Magnus, which interesting name for massive human. They're just both huge. And they're like the biggest people on this war station. 
Um, and let's talk about that. They're on Gaia Station. How did this come to exist? Well, we have to go back to Earth's destruction, which really isn't that long ago um, in, in the storyline of this book. It's fairly recent. Um, Kira herself was born post that, um, but she's a teenager. It doesn't go into it too much, but Earth's blown up. Why is Earth blown up? Earth's blown up because there being not even aliens being mean, starting wars and all that, and, uh, you know, the Earth... The aliens just nuke Earth all at once. Some, some big bomb they dropped on the planet and 14 billion people die. Well, if 14 billion people die and Earth's destroyed, how do we have Gaia Station? Well, it is a space opera, so some humans are on ships or on other stations, but in particular, this station exists because four warships um, plotted to escape or, or create this station right when this war conflict was happening. It doesn't go too much into that, but it, it eludes that it's going to for where I am in the book. So um, this group, this militant group, um, has some extremist ideas. And uh, the Skya station where Valkyr is growing up on is, is quite extremist and very military. They're, they're following through with um, creating this sort of new Earth, so to speak. And they're very, of course, anti the aliens, which are called the Mayota. It could be Majota, but I don't read the audiobook. I read the physical books. So let me know in the comments if it's Majota, which I like to say better, or if it's Majota. But anyway, that's the name of the alien race. Um, and they're they're basically plotting or trying to raise humans to to do where Earth left off. Um, and and the whole goal here and the training that they give these soldiers or future soldiers is to beat someday the Majota. Uh, so. Valkyr, or Kier, uh, is a soldier in training, and she's in a group called a mess. A mess is a group of a male or female. They separate them by gender, um, and they they train together up until I think it's age seventeen. I, I forget the age, and then they're separated um, into what their job's going to be. So our strong protagonist, big war breed, super strong girl, really wants to be in combat. She wants to become a soldier. Um, she wants to feel like she has this purpose um, to revenge Earth, right? So, um, and, and you can see that. She cares about other people's scores and their tallies, and they rate them, and um, they train them in these simulators, and she wants to be the best, but her brother's the best. Um, and then there's other people in her mess who are probably going to get other jobs, like um, working to actually keep the station alive. Um, some of those work in um, biology, um, or in even something like maintenance. And then there's another group that's very interesting called Nursery, super funky part of the book, um, where some of the females become um, mothers. So they're all trained to be soldiers, but some of them get an assignment at this age where they have to basically have war babies. <laughs> um, and so that's interesting because the, the soldiers essentially breed with the women who become in the nursery but it's all consensual sort of so it's just interesting i'm not going to go into it too much one thing i'm not going to do in this halfway review is go spoiler spoilery um i've done that before and i thought this book just even in where i'm at only a third of the way through feels like there's just too much i can say that's going to give stuff away so i just have to gloss so that kind of explains kind of what's going on she's she's been training she's an about to get her assignment um, and, um, she's nervous about that assignment and you kind of follow the stories of the other women in her mess. So me trying to avoid giving you spoilers is going to leave you off in an interesting part. I hope you read this book because here's where I'm at. We have, um, Kier who's very nervous to get her assignment. We have her mess all very nervous to get her assignment. Magnus is actually her twin. He's waiting to get his assignment too. We know that they're the best in the class. Um, and we know the best usually come on to be, um, the, the best usually go on to be soldiers, but also if they have great minds too, maybe even if they're great soldiers, like she has someone in her mess who has a really great mind, who's probably not going to go on to be a soldier, even though that's kind of what most of them want to be. Her mind's probably better off in a different station. And then you have some people who are soldiers, but maybe they'll end up being in the nursery because... You know, they have to make more great soldiers, and the best way to do that is to take the war breeds and use them as mothers. So it's like this interesting thing where they, there's a lot of these war breed types, and they have to be careful where they send them. So her brother hasn't gotten his assignment. 
Um, she hasn't gotten her assignment. This is kind of where I'm going to leave you off. I've got a little bit farther than this. And all I can say is this. Kira becomes very, very unhappy about her assignment. She feels like it's unfair. Um, and she basically goes on this identity crisis uh, where she's lived her whole life a certain way, expecting to get a certain thing, and that doesn't happen. And among the process, she finds out her brother's also been given his assignment and he suddenly made a radical decision. Um, <laughs> and this radical decision is causing her to question everything that she's ever believed. Um, along with this, there has been uh, an arrival to their space station who's an alien. This alien becomes a huge part of this whole journey. Um, and the alien is of the Mayota. Um, and uh, she, I think, is looking towards this alien for some answers. So I'm going to leave you off there, which I know is quite cryptic, but um, it's been good so far. Uh, my nervousness with this book is that some parts of it are just too close to the expanse for me. It could be that that's the only space opera I've read. Um, this is different from the expanse in that the, the lead character is a female and in the expanse the lead character is male. There's many characters though um, in the expanse so you get different female perspectives which is really nice. Um, but this character's way too close to one of the Expanse characters for me, which is Bobby Draper, um, who's also sort of this war breed um, Mars warrior. And, and she's described as being like two meters tall, so over six feet and uh, um, super like muscular and, and like trained to kill. And the, the similarities between these two main characters to me are a bit much. Um, so I'm very much interested to see where this goes and how Kier develops um, and I'm hoping that that her she becomes more complex than she is right now because where I'm getting Kier in the story she's um she's just she's just all about war she just wants to be a soldier that's it we see other characters having love interests um in the story we, we get more depth to them but she's just like must kill aliens yes and I just like I want her to have more um so yeah just a lot of similarities with the expanse there and Bobby Draper um also earth not destroyed in the expanse but like essentially un unlivable for a, a lot of people um it's it's gone to a place where humans don't want to live there in the expanse so um plus the satellite planets um and just the the stories the parallel the parallels draw a little too close. Um, also, an interesting point though to draw a positive is this book is giving very Big Brother a little bit and also very The Giver. I said that earlier. So it's interesting. Um, it seems that there's, you know, this militant group, someone's kind of controlling the information. Someone's like a keeper of the information, so to speak, sort of like the giver. And also you're doled out these jobs, just like in the giver and um, people become, you know, in, in nursery in the giver too and have to become mothers. So um, those are just two things that to me, um, only a third through the book, I'm hoping that, that the author um, diverts from a bit more. Um, so we shall see. But even so, even with those parallels drawn towards those other books, um, the writer's style, I think, is very nice. Um, and I'm, I'm really interested to see um, where Emily Tesh goes with it. So, so far, I'm going to, this book's like a high, four out of five. I'm going to say four out of five so far on my near halfway read. Um, I hope you try it out. Um, I hope you give it a, a check out and if you're a little nervous to try it that's fine because Rob and I are both going to review this next week on the show which means it's time to talk to you about our discord please join us in the discord where we can talk about this book more if you read the trigger warnings if you read those first few pages let me know what you think let me know if it stopped you or didn't stop you super interested about that and as always please like and subscribe because I found out Rob's mom watches this show. Yes, she does, Rob. I know this. So if you don't like and subscribe, I'm going to send Rob's mom after you. Have a good night, all.